Good lighting is at the core of all cinematography. You ever wonder why some shots in movies make you feel like you're staring at a literal masterpiece, while others look like they were lit by a flashlight taped to a mop? That's because the art director and the DPs are working their magic using lights like paintbrushes and sculpting the perfect scene. It's not just about turn on light, make thing bright. It's about drawing your eyes exactly where they want them, creating just the right mood and whispering, look here, you feel that? VFX and animation are no different. Good lighting takes a scene from looking like a cartoon from the early 2000s to something rich with texture, fully immersive, and looking cinematic. All the technical software skills in the world won't save you from a badly lit shot. Lighting is an art skill, and so fundamental art and photography skills are essential. If you're interested in learning more about how CGI is lit in your favorite films, what CG lighting artists do, the software they use, the skills they need, and what your day-to-day -day could look like if you chose to go down that path, stay tuned as we'll be covering all of that in this video. Lighting 3D scenes is not much different from lighting in the real world on set. Minus all the hoisting of expensive heavy equipment around all day. And I guess mapping an image on a sphere to recreate the real world is unique to CGI. But other than that, it's about thinking methodically about where to place your lights, dialing in color temperatures, intensity, and deciding which kind of lights to use to best suit your needs. Good lighting isn't just about making stuff look cool, though let's be honest, that's a huge part of it. It's about supporting the story, setting the mood, and making sure viewers don't miss the important stuff. Now, without sounding too reductive, what a lighting artist essentially does is place lights in the scene to establish the tone and guide the viewer's eyes, making use of fundamental art and photography skills like color theory and lighting techniques like three-point lighting and chiaroscuro and counterchain, etc. From there, lighters also get the joy of splitting up the renders into multiple passes so that compositors can later Frankenstein everything back together again. And find Finally managing the quality of renders by dialing in render settings in a way that produces a high quality final image without wrecking the farm with week long render times. As usual, the VFX artist day begins at the sacred coffee machine, a place for deep reflection, casual coworker chats, or more likely these days conversations with toddlers, pets, or weirdly judgmental houseplants. Once a shot gets assigned, the real fun begins. First step is usually to scour the internet for reference material from literally any source imaginable. Google images, classic films, random paintings, or even those awkwardly angled photos you took during your overly long lunch break. Sometimes the best reference can come from the most unexpected places. From there, usually a lead lighter would take the time to come up with a uniform look for a sequence by establishing a lighting setup on a single or a few key shots by creating a light rig and template that could then be passed on to the rest of the team. Next up, the lead lighter swoops in armed with caffeine and creativity to establish a uniform look for the sequence. They'll set up a light rig on a key shot or a few that establishes the vibe and overall look, creating a template that can then be passed on to the rest of the team. From there, the rest of the team picks up the template, loads in all the data passed down from the upstream departments and starts placing the lights in their own shots. Each shot is unique and has its own quirks, so it's inevitable that they'll have to tweak things by setting up additional render passes, settings, adding lights, or volume setups, and ultimately kicking it off to the render farm to be rendered, then quickly slapping the passes together in comp to be shown in dailies, where supervisors and directors get to partake in the joy of picking and poking at every single pixel on screen until they're absolutely satisfied with the results or the budget evaporates, whichever happens first. Some of that VFX jargon might sound like complete gibberish, so let's untangle that a bit. When lighters work on a traditional VFX shot, they start with what's called a plate. Not the kind you eat off of. This plate is just the footage shot on set. You might have a scene with a green screen that needs replacing with, say, a massive castle, a rampaging creature, or some good old-fashioned explosions. These CG elements are handed over from other departments. Now, if you're working on an animated film, everything is already 3D. No need to match a real-world plate. You get to focus on creatively lighting every single element in the scene. A lighter's got all kinds of lights available to them in their toolkit. Any rendering engine will support image-based lighting with dome lights to wrap high dynamic range 360 degree images around, area lights, spotlights, and tube lights to mimic the lights used on film sets, and point lights and sphere lights to get omnidirectional lights from a single source. Most lights come with standard controls like exposure, angle, and color temperature, so you can dial in those soft shadows, crank up the brightness, and get your colors just right. This is where your color theory knowledge comes in handy. You're not really just throwing light around, you're painting with light. The same way that an artist uses color on a canvas, but with digital photons. Other fundamental art skills like an understanding of photography principles and lighting techniques are also important, as you'll often be responsible for setting up motion blur and depth of field on a shot in much the same way that you would use your DSLR camera by tweaking shutter angles and focal distances. Shading and lighting are like 
peanut butter and jelly. They go hand in hand. As a lighter, you'll often find yourself knee deep in AOVs trying to debug tricky shading issues, and so it's vital to really know your way around PBR materials. In the end, it's all about finding the perfect balance of shading and lighting that'll achieve the final look that you're after and really make the shot come to life. From there, you've got other technical tools at your disposal to recreate realistic lighting scenarios like volumetric atmosphere that gives you a cinematic fog and light shafts, also known as god rays. And then there's gobos and cookie light filters that are used to cut out shapes from spotlights, just like on set with actual light rigs. In CG, they're often used for effects like underwater caustics, shadows from clouds, or light passing through tree leaves. It's basically adding a texture image to your light to block some of it out. With all these tricks up your sleeve, plus a lot of hard work and possibly too much coffee, you'll be churning out beautifully realistic renders. But that often isn't enough, and that's where a good understanding of some compositing techniques comes in handy to sprinkle on that missing 10 to 20 percent of realism to really sell the illusion. Things like exponential glow, inhalation, chromatic aberration, lens dirt, and all of that other good stuff to signal to the audience that it could have been shot by a real camera. But Elijah's job doesn't just stop with knowing how to get creative with light or match a reference. There's a lot of technical juggling involved with handling all of that data across entire sequences. Since a lighter is the last line of defense before the images get baked down to 2D frames, you've got to make sure it's all working. And because compositors are a picky bunch, they'll want every part of the image split into multiple render passes. They can tweak each part individually with AOVs correctly set up to allow for complete control over individual lights and other shading components like reflective highlights, depth, position, and more. On more complex tasks, tools like deep passes need to be set up by lighting artists to allow compositors to layer images over each other in 3D depth without having to hold out objects from other passes, or crypto mats so that new compositors can just select any 3D object in the scene on the fly and do things like color correct it individually without messing up the rest of the frame. But even with all that creative shot lighting and technical pass management and other trickery, you'll probably still end up with noisy renders or frames that are just straight up taking forever to finish. In the end, it ends up being an incredible technical job for a team that you'd think is only placing some lights around in 3D. There's a lot of pressure on lighters to get the renders out fast, looking good without any render issues, and set up in a way that keeps the compositors happy. All while managing hundreds of gigabytes worth of caches from various departments while your RAM cries and begs for release from render hell. And so, you'll be spending a lot of time getting to know the ins and outs of your 3D rendering software, and debugging issues with caches from all departments, which is why it isn't uncommon to see lighters move on to eventually become CG supervisors, overseeing all aspects of CG work throughout all departments on a show. In the world of VFX, lighting is typically handled in big name software like Katana, Houdini Solaris, Maya, or even Unreal Engine on occasion. And while there are some free alternatives like Blender and Gaffer floating around, they don't get as much love for one reason or another. To actually render anything, you'll usually need a rendering engine to plug into your software. Some programs come with their own engines like Blender's Cycles or Unreal's Lumen and Path Tracers. But when it comes to offline rendering, the heavy hitters are Arnold, RenderMan, V-Ray, and Redshift. Like the Avengers of Rendering each have their own powers and weaknesses that make them stand out from one another, but they're all fully capable of handling mostly the same stuff. And I mention this in almost every one of these videos, but you don't need to know how to code for most non-development jobs in the industry. That being said, having some coding skills definitely helps to automate tasks, create tools, and set up complex systems. Most pipelines are built around Python, and each DCC, Digital Content Creation for the Uninitiated, comes with its own Python API. Plus, they often have additional scripting languages you might want to pick up, like Mel in Maya, or Lua in Katana, and Vex in Houdini. Knowing even a little bit of code can sometimes make you look like a wizard in front of your colleagues, so that's a definite plus. AI is definitely on the rise, creeping into every corner of the industry like a rat in the kitchen, and while it can whip up some concept references or even generate entire shots, which, let's be honest, makes us all a little paranoid, even if the best results still look like unsettling vague lucid dreams from the upside down, it hasn't quite cracked the code to help with the lighting process just yet. Sure, there are some AI denoisers that can zap away unwanted noise and upscalers that add some extra detail, but getting them to work on a per pass per AOV level is virtually impossible in a true production environment. But with the speed at which AI is evolving, by the time this video goes live, who knows, we might all be out of jobs and replaced by sentient lighting rigs. So there you have it. That's what a lighter does and how CGI is illuminated in movies. If you want to dive deeper into the world of lighting, I highly recommend checking out Chris Sprejohn's online book. Uh, it's a masterclass in CG cinematography and should be on the reading list of every aspiring lighter. 
There's also plenty of books on traditional lighting techniques to help you wrap your head around the fundamentals, like Color and Light by James Gurney. And let's not forget about websites like Shot Deck. They're a treasure trove of beautifully lit keyframes and existing films, perfect for when you want to get inspired without having to binge watch every movie ever made. If you're looking to keep the conversation going, join our Discord community. It's a great place to share your work, ask for guidance on your projects, and connect with fellow creatives. And as always, if you want to support us, consider joining our Patreon. It really helps keep the lights on, literally. See you all soon, I hope.